Welcome. My name is Holly Musselwhite. I am the kinetics clinical educator for um, two years now, and I'm welcoming you to our Onwards and Upwards show for Friday. Um, each week, we bring a lot of great content to you. And today, we're going to be talking about the Great Lakes region and what it's like to live and work and travel in this area. So we're glad you're joining us. Please take a moment and put your questions and comments in the chat. And we're uh, looking forward to seeing where you're signing in from. So if you'll put there um, where you're watching from, that would be awesome. Um, we're going to bring on our guests in just a minute, but I'll take this moment to ask that if you're interested in um, learning more about journeying to the U.S. to work as a nurse, please uh, go online and apply to kineticsusa.com forward slash apply. And we'd be happy to take a look at your application and see if we can find a match for you. Um, so speaking of, when we talk about jobs and we talk about where Kinetics has contacts and where AMN Healthcare and our sister company, O'Grady Payton, have contacts. We work with so many locations throughout the United States. So we're going to be talking about the Great Lake region today. However, there's a lot of other places that you may be interested in going, and we may be able to help you out with that. So take a look at this map. And what you'll see um, is that every state has color, which is Staffing is um, O'Grady Payton, and we have um, locations throughout those dark blue states. And then the green states are ones where uh, direct hire, which is Kinetics, has um, placements and openings and nurses that are already working in most of those states. And then direct hire and staffing uh, combined have um, job orders in uh, the purple colored states. So a lot of opportunity, as you can see. Um, you can also go to our website, amnhealthcare.com forward slash international to check out more information about that. All right. So um, I'm going to take a look at the chat really quick. Hold on just a sec. Um, goodness here. So um, let's see. Glenda signing in from Abu Dhabi, UAE. Hi, Glenda. Thanks for being on today. And Luel uh, Augustine, I think from Manila, Philippines. Awesome. Uh, Nat is an ER nurse from Ghana. Thanks for being with us today, Nat. And uh, Nukluleko, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Zimbabwe. All right. A Zimbabwe nurse. Uh, John John, do we have nurses uh, for Virginia? So, um, yes, we do have some nurses who have gone to Virginia. and. Um, we um, we continue to look for nurses' interests. So if that's a location you want to go to, um, I believe we have a show that includes Virginia, but you can also go back to our website, as I mentioned earlier, and apply, and we'll see if we can find a match for the location you're looking for. Um, Jarek from the UK. Awesome. George is watching from Nairobi. Thanks for being on again today, George. Rita from Zambia. Harshvar Harshvardhan. Um, hope I said that right, is a neuro ICU nurse from India. Welcome. Um, where Colis is from Brazil, Miguel Rose in Canada, Kent, let's see, Kent Yap, interested, do we have nurses for New York? Yes, we do have some placements in New York as well. I'm not sure, um, guys, if you're asking, do we have nurses or do we have placements? But both. The answer is both. Um, so Ron is a PICU nurse from the Philippines. Ron, thanks for being on today. Tessie from the UK. Hi, Tessie. Um, and let's see, Arlene. I see you're joining from Jamaica. And Arlene, I think I've seen you on here before. Welcome back. Uh, Sonia. Um, we do. Okay. So Sonia, yes, we do have some Indian nurses in our pipeline. Although um, one of our other shows talks a bit about retrogression and what that means for nurses. And unfortunately, the Indian nurse process is uh, quite delayed because of visa retrogression dates for them. So um, it takes a long time, unfortunately. Um, Isaka from Ghana, another nurse from Ghana. Ahmed is in Abu Dhabi. And Lax 
need the features of Springfield Lake, Illinois. Okay. Hmm. Um, hi from Jordan, Suhaib. Uh, Kessia is from Brazil. Cheryl May from Abu Dhabi. Um, John John for psychiatry. So I think you were asking about a, a state. So um, I know that our pipeline does have some nurses who work in the psych uh, setting. Um, whether they uh, would go specifically to um, to New York, we would have to look and see. So if that's your specialty and you're interested in applying, please let us know and we'll see what we can do. Um, and you would do that by applying. <laughs> so Riza from Saudi Arabia, Chia from Nigeria. Wow, these just keep on coming. I'm gonna have to switch back uh, in just a minute. So um, I will check out more comments later on. And in the meantime, um, let's see if we can bring our guest on. All right, there he is. Daryl, can you hear me? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Daryl, you're on mute. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry, Holly. Hi. Hi. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for being on today. Do you see all, do you hear all these comments? We've got a lot of people from all over the globe watching today. This is one of my, uh, the shows that I've been on where I think I've seen just about as much diversity on this show as I ever have. So that's really mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so, Daryl, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I am 34 years old and I work in the Philippines. I, I grad, sorry, I graduated in 2010. I started to work as an ER nurse for around five years. And then I worked as, uh, um, I worked as a, triage nurse in a US based company, which is in the Philippines. And then our, our, res, our um, clients are here in the USA. And so I decided later on to move here in the USA and I am now working in Indiana. That's awesome. And Daryl, just for our audience, um, I know I introduced myself earlier, but I will tell you that my background is also in nursing um, and predominantly in the med surge setting, which I have a passion for, but it sounds like you have a passion for ER. So that's the great thing about nursing is you can enjoy certain facets more than others, and you can find uh, opportunities very widely uh, to meet people's interests and give them the chance to pursue something that they love. So sounds like you've done that within your career, both in the Philippines and then when you got here. Um, so tell me, um, why did you decide to come to the U.S.? Mm, okay. Um, honestly, I really wanted to... Um, I really wanted to be appreciated as a nurse and to work in a, a, a hospital set, set, setting that is more um, uh, more book based, and I wanted to travel most parts of the of the USA as well. And I wanted to see my sister who is living here in the USA. Oh, neat! So I think that's basically it. Okay. No, that's uh, that's very important. I think that's something that's shared among international nurses is a desire to be recognized for the skills and knowledge that they have and to continue to advance those skills and knowledge. So this definitely gives you an opportunity to do that. Um, and why Indiana? Was there any particular reason that you ended up in Indiana? Mm, okay, so... Um... I work, uh, I mean, I applied under Kinetics. It was introduced to me by my classmate, who is also mm -hmm. here in the USA now, thanks to him. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I have a relative in Indiana, which is in the Northern part. So I did not really think much about it. So I, uh, so when I got paired with, with an employer, which is under Miller's, um, I did not, dis I did not have any, um, I did not really um, hesitate. And then I just go on with the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And 
Um, so how long have you been in, here in the States now? Oh, just recently. I came here last June. So it's not been very long. You might even not still um, be finding a lot of things are new and different and still kind of discovering um, more about Indiana. But hopefully you've had a chance to explore a little bit, too. Um, mm. So how was your arrival when you got here? Was it what you expected? Yeah, actually, it came in smooth. So um, before I came here, I was uh, advised by my travel um, partner that I would be uh, that that um, that somebody's gonna uh, take me from the airport airport to the ho hotel and from the hotel to the to the facility that I'm going to work, and then I stayed. At a, at a certain hotel for three weeks. And I think uh, I'm really thankful about it. Mm -hmm. for that. It does sound really smooth. That's good. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit stressful when you're traveling that great mm -hmm. a distance and you don't know what the place looks like or how it's going to work when you get to the airport and you exactly. walk through those doors, you know, you pass mm -hmm. immigration and you walk out and it's like, okay, it's a big step, but where's my ride? <laughs> so that can be yeah. nerve wracking. <laughs> Um, so you said you had family here. So what had you heard about Indiana or that area of the United States before you got here? Well, not really much. Um, I heard that it is a suburb, um, suburb place in the USA, which is, I, I really expected. And one thing I know about Indiana is that it is famous about cars if you've heard about um, Indy 500. So that gave me maybe, uh, I mean, that become one of the reasons why I choose Indiana as well. So I wanted to visit the museum and um, everything else, so. <laughs> I got you. Okay, so Daryl, I'm gonna let you and the audience in on a little secret. I grew up in the South and mm -hmm. um, my grandfather used to race cars, stock cars though. So mm -hmm. I grew up around NASCAR and mm -hmm. that, that uh, track that runs, you know, the Indy 500 and all of those big races and the different types of cars it runs, that's on my bucket list. I haven't got there yet, but yes, cars are a big thing um, in Indiana and in Indianapolis. So I hope you get a chance to go soon and observe some racing activity there because I've heard it's a great place. I've watched it on TV and I've always um, enjoyed mm -hmm. the events that I get to see, but it's much more fun when you can hear the, the race live um, and be there. So I hope you get to do that soon. Yeah, I hope I will too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to take a weekend or something. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's see. We are going to see if our audience and um, uh, if you know anything about these places, you can uh, you can check it out too. But we're going to see if our audience wants to uh, participate in a trivia game. So guys, get uh, ready to share there um, your um, your in the comments um, and Daryl. You may have to speak up a little bit. I think some of our audience is having trouble. So make sure your audio is up a little bit because okay. um, I'm seeing in the comments, some of them are asking if you can speak a little louder. Okay, so where is our, um, our uh, next slide, which shows our trivia game. So we're gonna look at some photos and we're gonna see what our audience might know about these locations. So, can you tell us where this might be or what landmark this is? And this is in the Great Lakes region. So let's see. I'm going to give you another bit of information about this that you, if you know what this is, you, you may already know it or you may not. But this particular um, building, it looks kind of familiar. It looks like another famous international landmark in Paris. So at the Louvre, you'll see some glass uh, pyramids there at that museum there in, in Paris. And if you look at this, you go, well, that looks kind of similar. And this was designed by the same architect, I.M. Pei. So their um, slogan there kind of gives you a clue as to what this might be. It says, long live 
rock. And if you zoom in a little bit, you might be able to see uh, what it is, but do you know where it is? So it's in the Great Lakes uh, area. Oh, yeah, Harshvadan, Harshvadan got it. It's in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. So if you're into rock and roll and museums, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is located in Cleveland. I see quite a few of you guessed that one. So good job. All right. Let's look at our next location and see um, if you can guess that one. Good job, May, Queenie, and Ruth. Um, uh, you got it too. Okay. So this is a sign for a road. Um, you might have heard of it. It's US 66 or we sometimes call it Route 66. Um, sometimes it's uh, nicknamed Main Street of America. But tell me where you think this particular sign probably is if it's in the Great Lakes region. And the architecture behind it gives it away a little bit too. Nope, it's not Ohio. Nope. Need some more guesses. You might be able to guess the city um, but I'd be pleased if you can even grab the state. Oh, Jero, you're on it. All right. Good job. Chicago. Yes. So Route 66 actually is a, a road that goes, it starts in Chicago, Illinois, and it goes all the way to, you know, it goes all the way to LA, California. This is actually one of the first U.S. highways that had a number on it. So in the old days, if you were on a road, there were no signs that could tell you, OK, this is the road that, you know, is number one and it goes through these states or it goes through these counties or whatever. So when the U.S. started actually identifying roads and putting in routes that people could travel, especially long distances through multiple states, they had a numbering system. So Route 66 is actually pretty famous. And there was a song about it too. Um, I think it's called something like Get Your Kicks on Route 66. It was out in 1946. So there's a little history lesson for you too. Um, this road takes you through Missouri, so obviously Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and some of California. So it's a pretty cool route to follow. And a lot of people will do road trips on it because you can stop and see other historical landmarks and points of interest along the way. All right. So um, let's see, uh, Daryl, had you seen any parts of Chicago yet? A little no, not at all. No. Yeah, and, and yeah, I never visited any places since I arrived here. Oh, so we're going to be talking yeah. about bucket list then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, of course. Yeah. All right. Um, I would love to. So let's look at the next location and see if uh, if you guys can figure this one out. I've got. Uh, oh, hey, Daryl. Maybe this is uh, familiar. Check it out. We might have given you a hint earlier as to what state this happens to be in. Anybody mm -hmm. want to guess? While you're I guessing, know. I see Adebisi is saying hello. Yeah, Ruth, it is a racetrack. It's not in Chicago, mm -hmm. May. Mm -mm. Although there is a racetrack in Chicago, it's not this one. So keep on guessing. Ruth, there you go, Indiana. And, yep, so this one is actually Indianapolis. Pretty cool, right? So Indiana, where you are. So now you got an aerial view of where you want to go and check out those. Yeah, races. you have to tell me the name of that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So the Indianapolis Motor Speedway um, host events. So if you go online um, to their website, you can actually see what kinds of races they have. Because obviously you don't race just one type of car. There are lots of different mm. um, cars and races and trucks and all kinds of stuff that get raced at these big tracks. So you can check out the events. Um, sometimes the stock car races are really busy, um, mm. but the, the truck races might not be as much and they might be more affordable. All right. So let's see. Um, can we bring up our next location? Looks like everybody kind of figured it out for that one. It is Indianapolis. Oh, boy. 
this one is maybe going to be a little bit harder for you. So check it out and um, think for just a moment about where this is. You can kind of see obviously a lot of water, but the Great Lakes are lakes. They're not oceans. So this one might be a little bit harder to guess, but obviously a lot of, uh, you know, for those of you nature lovers who like natural beauty, this is some place that if you're ever in the Great Lakes area, you might want to go looking for. I'll give you just a minute to think. Anybody? Hmm? Somebody, I think, put the state in already. So, yes. This is on Mackinac Island in, you guessed it, Michigan. That's right. Good job. Maybe some of you have ambitions to visit Michigan. And if you do, I hope you will get this kind of a shot. This is my favorite thing to see and do in the United States. Things that are beautiful landscapes um, in all kinds of different weather. I love visiting these types of places. So, of course, this one might be a little bit of a hike. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Next photo. We've got quite a bit of great locations people might want to check out. Okay, so we've got some hints in here, but I'll let you guys take a look around. I will tell you, America does have some castles like this one. However, they're not as old as the ones in Europe and other parts of the globe might be. We're a little bit newer in our castle building. So our designs um, kind of borrow from a lot of different architecture. All right. So we've got a hint there. Nope, Rana, it's not Minnesota. Mm -mm. <laughs> but it is a neat place, you know, and Rana, um, if you know anything about Lisa McCollum, then she probably knows um, a little bit more about this. Oh, wait, Gladys. Yep. Cook Castle in uh, Ohio. So, yes, this uh, Cook Castle is uh, also called the Jay Cook House. And um, it is on an island in Lake Erie. It's called Gibraltar Island. It's a national historic landmark. And as you can see, they do let people visit. But this is actually owned by the Ohio State University, where they host the Stone Library. So it's also um, a, some sort of a research. Yeah, it's a freshwater field research station for the, for the university as well. So a lot of great history, but it's continued to um, serve an important purpose um, for Ohio State University as well. So again, maybe something you want to add to your bucket list. <laughs> a little bit smaller castle than I usually am used to visiting, but it's kind of neat. All right. So I'm not sure if we have any more photos for trivia or not, but you guys have done pretty good. So either you recognize these places or you're really good at fast web searching, which kudos to you if that's it too. All right. Whitefish Point Light Station. Okay. So another secret about me, I love climbing lighthouses. Um, now, if you look at this one, it doesn't look very climbable, right? So this is a site that has been made into a museum and place that people can go and visit. And it, um, this light started up in its location in 1849, so it's been around for a while. Where is it? What state is it in? I need to know in the comments. All right, I don't even see any guesses yet. You guys must be searching the web to see if you can figure it out. Ah, uh, Rana. Yes, it is in Michigan. Good job. Yep. <laughs> so you're learning something about geography today. One of the interesting things about the Great Lakes, though, is when we think of lighthouses, we usually think that they're to protect us from storms and currents and things that are close to the coastline on off of the ocean. So we're looking at like ocean coastline and saying there's probably going to be lighthouses there, right? However, 
these Great Lakes sometimes get very, very, very strong storms. And actually, this um, museum in particular, Whitefish Point, it is um, it is on the entry to Whitefish Bay, and it is the oldest active light on Lake Superior. There was a really famous shipwreck in uh, that area. It was called the Edmund Fitzgerald, and this particular ship was coming in to the bay, and unfortunately, that night, the light was not lit. So the ship and its 30 sailors perished and it's become, um, I think there's some songs or something else that's been written about it. But um, this, the other name of this location is the Graveyard of Ships. So when you think about lakes, you usually don't think about strong storms and strong weather, but actually the Great Lakes region does have some storms that come in because you have to think about where it is too. So geographically, this is more in the north part of the United States, and it's also shares borders between the U.S. and Canada. So we do see some strong storms. Another tiny bit of trivia for you about this. So the Great Lakes actually empties... Uh, into a basin. All that water is flowing into a basin. And that water flowing into that basin is what is also flowing over one of another famous landmarks that's on both the U.S. and the Canada side. We share it as a border, and that's Niagara Falls. So where the water starts and where it ends up makes for some really interesting scenery. Um, okay, Let's shift gears and get back into talking about um, some of the some of the Great Lakes stuff. So, you live in Indiana. What uh, what is the name of the city that you live in? Okay, I am currently stationed in Indianapolis, the 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 main city in Indiana. Yeah, the capital. Yeah. All right, the capital. It mm -hmm. is. And so um, tell me when it comes to like transportation, because it would be a big city since it's a capital city. So what's the transportation like? Well, um, the main transportation of people here is uh, their private cars. However, we also do have bus buses, mm -hmm. which um, travels from 5 a.m. up until 11 p.m. during the normal mm -hmm. days. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's pretty accessible. And the good thing is um, you only have to pay $1.75 and you are allowed to board buses back and forth unlimited for two hours. So that's very Round cheap. Yeah, yeah, that is very cheap. Yeah. Um, that's uh, probably close to a gallon of gas in some places. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. you're very you're very lucky that you can access that level of public transportation. But that mm -hmm. is something that we see in a lot of big cities is there are buses that run. Um, sometimes there are trains. If you're talking mm -hmm. about like Chicago, Chicago has trains mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some of the other big cities in, um, you know, Minneapolis, ha uh, mm -hmm. Minnesota have this type of public transportation that's not only very accessible, but very affordable. Mm -hmm. Um for folks that live outside of big cities, there's, their city may still be big enough to have a bus, mm -hmm. but it is not like what you probably would think. So it may be that the buses run in more limited hours and more limited mm -hmm. frequency. And um, so it may not be workable to, be, mm -hmm. to, to not have your own car. Mm -hmm. Um, so where I come from, different area of the United States, central Florida is still a relatively big community. We do have bus systems down there, but for me to get to and from work and not have to try and, you know, figure out how to get, I, I don't like to get up really, really early to go to work. I like to like make sure I'm on time, but not like, you know, have to count for the bus and whatever. So, um, it's a convenience factor for a lot of folks. Um, but I think, what you said earlier about private car being the predominant way that people get around, even in a big city like mm -hmm. yours, um, is pretty normal, mm -hmm. even when there's public transport available. Where we see mm -hmm. that less is probably in 
very, very metropolitan big cities like uh, like mm-hmm. New York City. You know, yeah, if you're living in downtown yeah. New York, first of all, mm-hmm. um, you probably can't even park a car there without serious expense and risk to your car. So public transportation there looks very different from what it looks like in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, so does that mean you ride the bus a lot? When I first came here, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did but you get a car? I, I'm sorry. Did, Did you get you? your car yet? Oh yeah, I just uh, I just got a car, but however, it's just a rental car for now. So mm-hmm. I applied in, uh, in in a certain company, and then they provided me free car, a rental car for like three months. So that's what I'm using right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, no, I, I know that program is really, really awesome to kind of get you into your first mm-hmm. car without having to wait until you've built some credit here. So, mm-hmm. and it's good that you have a nice rental in the meantime. Um, okay. So you can't work all the time. What are you doing in your free time? Well, I just sleep actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Because I'm a night nurse. I, they, I, Honestly, they don't have enough st- staffs right now, so I don't have choice but to work night shifts. I mm-hmm. also do render extra days for duties. When I'm off, they will call me, so I have to run there and work. And, but I make sure that my I still have the uh, I mean a life work balance. So I sometimes go to the gym, run for a bit, eat outside, and then stay at home sleep <laughs> catch up on sleep okay yeah. Good. You got all it. right um so hmm you did say you eat out so what kinds of places have you found to eat out there uh, just like the, the regular fast foods that you can find like mcdonald's panda express ah. so um, yeah, just like that mm-hmm. yeah. And, okay. yeah and and I could not really catch up on those restaurants and, and those fine dining because when I wake up, it's, they are already closed. So, you know, I work night shift. I need to sleep when I come here. And I d- adjust my sleep. So I definitely could not go around the city and eat somewhere else. But just fast foods. <laughs> you know. All right. So another question. Have you, when you're out and about, have you seen any restaurants where you go, you know what? When I get some time, I want to go there. What kind of cuisine are you looking forward to trying now that you've had a little bit of time to navigate Indianapolis? Mm, so far, I've eaten most of Western Western cuisine. However, I would love to eat in a Chinese or maybe Asian restaurant, which mm-hmm. I can find. Um, I, I think there are lots of res- Chinese restaurants here mm-hmm. that I would love to try when I'm well, when I get the time, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I really miss those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some good food in, in, uh, and a lot of different options in Indianapolis. Um, and, you know, what I what I used to do when I was craving a certain type of cuisine and I was stuck at work is um, DoorDash. Mm-hmm. DoorDash, uh-huh. yeah. So <laughs> if they were yeah, still I- open and I could get the DoorDasher uh-huh. to bring it to my work, let yeah. me tell you. I was, yeah. I would splurge a little bit so that yeah. uh, I could get my craving or my fix. Mm-hmm. So, it's very convenient too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And yeah. and in Indianapolis, lots of, you know, there's not just DoorDash, there's a couple other vendors I'm sure that you can order from. And so mm. Uber yeah. Eats and all of that stuff, mm. it adds up financially. It's not, it's not the best choice for everybody, but it's not nice if you, choice. if you're, if you can't get to the restaurant, so mm-hmm. many restaurants, even little mom and pop mm-hmm. places, We'll have mm-hmm. that option for someone to be able to get food and bring it to where you are. So, um, how's the weather out there? Um, when I came here, I was I'm very lucky because I arrived here with a nice weather. So, it um it's in the middle of the summer. It's a little bit scorchingly hot. However, mm-hmm. um, it's um it's transitioning to autumn right now so i mean mm-hmm. uh, yeah autumn so i it's like breezy it's cold at at times and the good thing is that i'm able to learn about their um climate because i 
came from a country which is you know always hot so i'm not culturally uh, i mean i'm not shocked from their weather i get i i have that i have some i have many time to ask people and elicit some um advice on how i can adapt to certain weather so right now i'm preparing for winter <laughs> and i it's ready yeah. it's cool up there so yeah it is um so the the are your leaves uh, when you go outside do you see some of the leaves starting to change color from greens into like oranges and yellows yet no it's pretty much green let me just check yeah it's pretty much green <laughs> it's still green okay so autumn though it it gets really awesome when you go outside because you do start to see that gradual change of leaves um and it, then they start to fall eventually and you get into winter but yeah I, it's good to hear you're preparing um so that's the other thing is your wardrobe will have to have quite a bit of diversity because you will have really hot summers some people are very surprised when they've moved somewhere in the northern part of the u.s they're not expecting if they get here how hot it can really be during the summertime and um that's definitely, you want your air con <laughs> for sure. So um, the, the other thing is if you live closer to the lakes, those bodies of water also are going to be cooler winters. And because there's more moisture coming off mm -hmm. the lakes, you end up seeing more snow in those areas that are closer to the lakes. So you have time to get ready, both from a wardrobe perspective, making sure that your driving skills are in order. Because of course, when the weather starts up, that's colder and, and, mm. you know, sometimes it's more rainish than snowish, mm. but still you want to be able to be comfortable with the roads. So I'm glad that you're going to have a little time to kind of ease into it. Um, so I know you said you haven't done much since you've been here just yet, but, um, have you heard about some places to go um, that are maybe close by things that are like, Hey, you really should, now that you're here, you should go here. Is there anything that your family or your coworkers are telling you, you ought to go see? Um, they are telling me to go to the canal. It is, um, it is a tour, tourist spot here in Indianapolis. And I think it's just right across. <laughs> Yeah, however, I I don't have time, but I would one day want to go there. It's pretty awesome, they said. Yeah, sounds like you're picking up. Um, uh, are you doing some extra shifts then? Um, yeah. Yeah, sounds like you're working a lot. And hey, that that's good. That's good when you first start coming in because you can kind of you know build up your your finances and kind of mm, yeah, recover yeah. from the from the move and everything so mm. yeah it's close so you definitely should check check it out um and then uh is there anywhere in the US that you're thinking like if i get to take a trip here's where i think i'd like to go um yeah if i am given a chance i would want to go to virginia where my sister is at Mm -hmm. visit yeah. family yeah mm. well hopefully you can yeah. do that virginia is really not that far you just have to decide fly drive plane yeah. mm -hmm. sorry train um there are a lot of different transportation options and each of them comes with their own pros and cons um up in the uh up in that area there's still um trains that run for passengers so if you want to be like a little more adventurous, get on a train and <laughs> go see your sister that way rather than putting all those miles on that car. Um, but there's a lot of neat things to see and do. Um, so you have you gotten your driver's license yet in Indiana? Are you work driving um, on your international license? I'm driving through my Philippine license right now. So mm -hmm. um, I, I I am scheduled to take the exam um, next week. Mm -hmm. So I'm preparing and hopefully I can get it. Yeah. But the good thing here in the USA is that they allow you to drive actually using your international, I mean, your foreign license. I don't even have the international license, mm -hmm. but I'm, they told me to secure it like maybe three to six months. Yeah. Most yeah. states will give you time to get the driver's mm -hmm. license um, mm -hmm. in that particular state because you have to establish residency. Mm -hmm. 
which mm, means correct. you you have to have your like you can't just be living out of a hotel and get it. it you usually have mm. to have an, a permanent address, bills that come to that yeah. address, a lease agreement, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so there's a lot of paperwork that you have to take when you're ready to get your state's either driver's license or state identification. Mm. I'm going to take a look at the comments for just a sec, Daryl. Let's see what everybody's saying. That's so um, I know we've put some links in the chat for you guys um, mm -hmm. on how to start your American dream on the 50 states guidebook. So if you're interested in learning more about the states um, uh, in the United States and what are some of the features of those states, that's provided in that guidebook for you. So you can download that for free and, um, you know, take a look at your leisure, learn more about the places as you consider where you'd like to go. Um, Barbara, I see you're watching from Germany. That's awesome. And, um, Mark says that uh, everybody's old, reliable McDonald's. Yeah, it's uh, international. <laughs> <Yeah>. McDonald's <laughs> the best. <laughs> yep. Yep, it is. Um, and, and you know, the funny thing is when I'm on a road trip uh, anywhere in the United States, I know I can count on finding one of those. So if nothing else, you will find a McDonald's. Um Shabazz says, Daryl Reyes, you are great. <laughs> so you have a fan. Um, Ada BC says, with retrogression delays, how long will it take from the start of the processing to getting your visa after passing NCLEX? So um, currently we are looking at some of our nurses who are being filed now, probably coming in 2025. Um, and it is very individualized based on, um, obviously your priority date, the date that your visa is filed, as well as whether you have English at that time, how long it takes you to get all of the requirements in place. Um, so just bear that in mind. That's a very broad projection. However, um, we did just, um, have a show last week or no earlier this week on the visa bulletin. So on Monday we had an extra onwards and upwards show with our legal uh, uh, experts. And we talked about the latest with uh, retrogression. And if you check out that show, you'll find some great information on what the changes are, how we are reacting as a, as a uh, industry and as a company and what we are doing to try and help our nurses continue to come here as quickly as they can. So uh, Shad is watching from the UAE. Ruth mentioned Amtrak. So yes, Amtrak is one of our um, train systems that, um, that people can book trips on and travel to different places all over the United States. I have an aunt who likes to ride the train from um, South Carolina to Central Florida. She doesn't want to drive it, so she rides the train, has a nice uh, trip. All right. So Ruth mentioned, can you tell us again how you were able to get a rental car? So Daryl, how you were able to get a rental car for free for three months. Can you give us a little bit of details on that? Oh, absolutely. So um, I came here with Kinetics and I asked them if uh, I asked them about the process. And luckily, if you well, if you process under kinetics, they ha they are they have partners with they have um, they have comp car companies that they partner with, and then they would not ask you any payment at all. So um, um, they will provide you car like maybe three months or six months, depending on uh, de depending on the availability of the car. So when the the car arrives that's the time you are going to pay. So right now I'm not paying for anything. So they told me that the car will arrive within three months, three months. So um, it's absolutely free. So you have to choose. Uh, I mean, it's wise if you ask your, um, um, if you ask your, um, how do you call this? Uh, like kinetics or any other agencies that that helps you or direct hiring companies that that assist you if they have those because here in the usa it is a must to have a car yeah that's really good advice and thank you for explaining the process so mm -hmm. to reiterate um 
what when when you work with a company like Kinetics, we oftentimes mm-hmm. have contacts that we can connect you guys with as mm-hmm. as healthcare professionals who are looking to establish yourselves. Because when you come to the United States, you don't have credit. And credit right, right. is how you get car loans for the mm-hmm. average Joe. So um, there are companies that understand that's going to be a challenge and they will mm-hmm. work with international nurses and other healthcare professionals um, to try and help them get into what's likely their very first car. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to be, when you look at the selection, you may find that in your head, you were like, this is my dream car. This is what I Mm -hmm. want. And it's not, it's not available, but understand that having that vehicle, not having to worry about, you know, with brand new vehicles, you're, you're Mm -hmm. doing regular maintenance, but it's not repairs all the time worrying about, Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've got a used car and something's happened where I need to get it repaired or worked on. So you kind of can ease into the process um, a lot easier mm-hmm. by doing what Daryl did, as opposed to hoping that you're going to get public transportation, hoping that you'll be able to walk to work, hoping that you can hitch a ride. It's just not that simple. So, Daryl, I'm mm-hmm. glad you took advantage of that program and that it's working out so well for you. Um, so Mon Leo says watching from India, Raya is watching from the Philippines. Uh, Salvi says, how do you get the book? So I think you're talking about the book for the 50 States. So it's a download, um, on our website, which we have the link and we can drop the link. And again, you click on the link. It takes you to the, to the, um, uh, book download and you can just basically pull it right off the internet and put it on your computer and take a look at it. Or you can not download it, open it there, and and look at it on the website. Dia is watching from the Philippines. Hi, Dia. Thanks for joining us. And Ruth is uh, very glad to get that uh, information about the car, Daryl. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so let's talk about the community. Um, is it very diverse where you are, or you know, do you see um, a lot of cultures represented in Indianapolis? Yeah. Um, Indiana is a place where um, every every culture is present. So you can see Asians all around. You can see Mexicans. You can see Puerto Ricans, Blacks, um, basically Americans, <laughs> everything. So, and, and the good thing is that they are not judgmental. Um, they just, I mean, you can just wear whatever you like to wear. You can just go outside, eat, have your hair pink, like that. Nobody cares here. And they are very friendly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is something that's really nice about the Great Lakes mm-hmm. region in, in, mm-hmm. is that it's very much a melting pot, just like mm-hmm. a lot of other regions of the U.S. We have, mm-hmm. you know, we are, you'll hear people say that the United States is a nation of immigrants. So mm-hmm. yes, yeah. there were Native Americans mm-hmm. here first. However, mm-hmm. the bulk of the population is either descended from an immigrant or an immigrant themselves. And yes, so yes. I think it it makes it, you know, sometimes more friendly than people expect. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's, yeah. I don't know, was it surprising to you how friendly some people were? Um. Not at all. Actually, no? I yeah, I I figured out that uh, most Americans are, and um, people who transition to Americans are trying to live t- together in harmony and like that. But mm-hmm. still, there are um, there are people who is not really as what uh, what we expected, but still, the majority I'm talking is is great. So I mean. I, I experienced that when I work out at the gym. People are um, people are very close. They would always say, say hi at you. They, when they when you come across with their eye, they will always say smile. I mean, they will always say anything, greet you, and I feel welcome. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm that's glad really that I'm here. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. awesome. So I'm glad that the it lived up to your expectations. That's really that's really um, a relief, I guess. You know, I know for a lot of people when they consider making such a big change, it's at first exciting, and then the closer you get, it gets a little scary. So 
Um, sounds like you got welcomed into the community already. And that's a really important part of being able to adjust with all the other changes that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So how did you find your housing? Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. my employer basically dragged me all the way to town looking for apartments. And um, he really spent hours with me. He even printed a map. A uh, map. That's why I'm really thankful. Even mm -hmm. though he is a very busy person, he is to be the administrator of all the Miller um, Miller facility. But he still he tried to make sure that they get me from the hotel and bring me back to. Uh, from the hotel to the work and also after work they would drive drive me around to to the uh i mean from the from the bank to the social uh, social security office and also to the apartment so i end up um i end up in uh, in indianapolis which is um which is in the heart of the city and it's um, they made sure that it is not expensive for uh, it is not expensive and also so oh, it is um it is safe actually and even my uh, the even the parking space it is locked we have a gate on it and i'm really thankful that i ended up here you're very blessed um to have a facility and an employer that um that is taking that time with you mm -hmm. um and I think that when you know someone locally who can take mm -hmm. you to those places and let you look around, or you have a liaison who maybe can also be available, mm -hmm. those are the folks like you can look online and go, that looks perfect. The pictures mm -hmm. look good. The price is good. The size is good. But when you get mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. what if it's not in a place that you really want to be? What if it's not safe? So it sounds like you had mm -hmm. some great support to find mm -hmm. something that yeah. sort of ticked all the boxes and, and still wasn't all that expensive, mm -hmm. comparatively speaking. Um, so that's uh, that's what we hope will be uh, everyone's experience. And I think the other thing you want to do, if you're not blessed enough to have an administrator like Dar uh, like Daryl's, <laughs> although I've heard a lot of similar stories like that, but if you're not, you still can ask questions. You can say, I'm looking in this area. Can you tell me, have you ever been there? Have you heard of this area? Do you think it's safe? And a lot of times the locals are more than happy to tell you whether they think it's going to be a place you should be living or not, or your family should be living. So, um, Daryl, do you have uh, a family with you at the moment? No, actually, I'm living by myself. Okay. Yeah. So then I did have another question about um, about childcare, but I don't know how much you're going to know about that since you mm -hmm. don't have your kids to mm -hmm. worry about. But mm -hmm. um, in general, do you find that most of your coworkers, um, they have childcare options and, you know, mm -hmm. is that is that a, a stressor for them or they're usually able to find childcare and or get their kids into school and things like that? Um, I never really heard of that. Actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. but my Filipina friend, mm -hmm. uh, but my Filipina friend, who she's um, she is also at the same facility where I'm working right now. Mm -hmm. I met her there. Um, she said she just have to pay um extra for for her kids, and she just get insurance for them as well. Because mm -hmm. when you got when you came here in the United States and work with certain company you have to work for like 90 days for you to get benefits including your family so um yeah so she just she just um um acquired she shopped for insurances and mm -hmm. also she is pl planning to look for a school mm -hmm. but i'll update you if if she has those information. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully she that. does. Yeah. So that is something that you want to consider overall mm -hmm. is what is the school system like in the area where you're looking? Um, mm -hmm. And just like you as a, as a nurse immigrating here have gone through um, phases of culture shock and the adjustment process, 
your children would go through that too. So prepare accordingly and think about, you know, Daryl's a little bit lucky in the sense that he doesn't have children to, to try and help get used to everything while he's trying to settle in. But there are a lot of people who come who bring their children and they're settling their children at the same time. They are experiencing their own settling, getting used to the culture. Um, you know, so they're, you're getting used to the culture at work and in the community and your children are getting used to the culture at school. Um, and again, because so many communities throughout the United States are so diverse, it means that your children are most likely going to be around other people who've immigrated to that area. But it can still be a challenge. Your, you know, your friends and family networks that you had built maybe over a lifetime, they're now mm -hmm. so far away and you've got to build new ones. So, um, so Daryl, one thing I did hear you say is that you made a friend at work who's also from the Philippines. And that's awesome because that also helps with that adjustment period, making those connections and being friendly yeah. towards other people and getting to know, you know, sometimes it's nice that you can connect with another Filipino because it's like, oh, they, they know what foods we like and, and they know a lot about that country that I'm from and some of the things that are just nice to talk about and reminisce about and have shared experiences with. And then build those shared experiences here as well. So it's important to form those friendships um, once you're here. Don't don't stay and sleep all the time, right, Daryl? <laughs> okay. Um, so you know we've got a couple minutes left. Um, we'll delve into one of the final questions. So you have you have an apartment that you're renting. Um, can you give us like a general estimate of how much, uh, how many bedrooms you have and approximately how much you're paying a month for that? Mm, okay. So um, since I'm alone, I am allowed to rent a one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. and with one bathroom apartment, uh, one bathroom. So if you have family, uh, like my friend, my co work, my Filipino co worker, she has, uh, she has two, she has a twin and a husband so they are four four mm -hmm. um they they uh the the apartment owners are the uh, i mean the apartment owners do not allow them to stay in a one bedroom so yeah so they needed to find at least two so mm -hmm. for luckily for me i i only get one room and it's only for 850 dollars that's pretty affordable, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it to is. be in a safe area, that is very good um, for a large city like that. So mm -hmm. kudos to you. Um, and you mentioned something really important. So in every place, there are occupancy rules. Some of mm -hmm. them are set Correct. by local governments. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be set by the, the uh, apartment complex. Um, but many times, um, like I said, the local government or the state government in some cases can be involved in setting those occupancy um, uh, requirements. So if you are a family of four, um, living in a one bedroom apartment would probably not be acceptable in most places that you would want to live. Um, and so when you're, when you're looking at trying to save money, you also have to understand what are going to be the requirements for living in that particular place and, um, assume if you have more than yourself and, and your spouse or partner with you, that you will have to have additional rooms depending on how many additional family members or whoever is with you. For instance, if you found a roommate, there are rules mm -hmm. around, you know, the, the number of people, regardless of whether they're family or not. So mm -hmm. that's something to really kind of be aware of when you, you know, don't assume I'm going to get a one room and it's cheap and I'm going to save. You may not be allowed to do that and, and get housing in a safe place that you really want to be in. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So Daryl, do you have any advice for people who are looking to move to the Great Lakes? You've shared some good insights already, but maybe a final piece of advice for them. Um, okay, so number one is just to be prepared because when you come here in the USA, um, you cannot expect to have time to, make, to travel and enjoy. Like 
in my in my situation um when i when i arrive they started my training immediately for five days and then they they let me um work alone so be prepared and always um try to maybe have a have a balance of life and work but and always enjoy and always and also um be be cautious always because americans do really appreciate what you do so and also you have to establish yourself with them they are very um um particular with that so i think that's it and also before you before you before you leave your country spend time with your family because it's going to be sad here <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> You are definitely going to miss your family and your friends. And so having some quality time with them right before you come is something that a lot of people find sort of sustains them until they meet again. Um, thankfully, in this day and age, we also have the technology where you can see them um, and do do web calls and things like that. But um, like I said earlier, and, and that would maybe be um, something to tack on to your advice, which is very early on, you want to start making connections here. So as Daryl said, establish yourself, um, get to know people, um, let them know you. Um, you know, sometimes when um, you don't open up and share more about yourself and explore the place where you are, it becomes very isolating for you. And that's very hard to cope with. So, um, you know, most Americans are very open, warm, and friendly um, as a culture. And if you um, reciprocate, if you give that in return, you'll find that you'll make friends very quickly. You don't have to be the life of the party, <laughs> but you'll still be able to make those social connections and you'll become part of families here. So then you have family in two parts of the world or maybe three, depending on how many places you've been. <laughs> All right. So um, we do have some upcoming onwards and upwards shows we want to share with you. So we'll pull those up in just a second. Here we go. Oh, the topic everybody loves, taxes in the USA, coming next week on Friday. Then we're going to do another immigration Q&A show on October 6th. So if you want to join for that, um, you know, you'll have a chance to ask questions more about retrogression and other other opportunities to um, to understand what's happening um, and what we are looking forward to doing in the future. And then on October 13th, we're going to have a facility showcase with Northside. They are a wonderful facility or group of facilities actually in Georgia. And um, we have a great partnership with them. So I hope you'll join and uh, get to know more about Northside. Every Monday, we have the Kinetics College shows. Those are free educational shows that are alternating for NCLEX and English. So those of you who have N NCLEX done, congratulations. Got to get that English done. So keep working on um on preparing for those exams. If you don't have NCLEX and you're like, should I wait? Don't wait. Get it done. Get your English done. Get your visa filed so you have your priority date. Um, we have um, we have a lot of people who um, get a little discouraged when they hear about retrogression and they may go, eh, I don't know if I want to do this right now. But you can be using the time between now and when your priority date comes current to finish up those things and to be ready so that when the time comes that you are current with your priority date, you're here very quickly. So we're still filing visas for our nurses and um, continuing to have open orders from our client facilities. They're still interested in hiring international nurses and planning for their future arrivals. They understand retrogression isn't um, isn't going to stop. Uh, sorry, isn't going to stop them from um, partnering to to bring nurses here sooner rather than later. But they understand it's a process and that there's a lot we can do. Uh, to get you in that queue and keep you moving. And then when that priority date is current, here you go. Um, 
Let's see. So we uh, we do have a referral program as well that you can participate in. If you go to our website, you'll be able to see information about that. Um, so we have a thousand dollar referral fee with four nurses with NCLEX that goes on until December 31st of this year. Make sure that you follow the process on our website for how to get this referral um, process going for nurses that you know with NCLEX. Um, we have free English scholarships. So those their review courses are provided to all of our Kinetics USA RNs who, uh, who are reviewing and preparing for their English proficiency exams. We have a podcast, great podcast called Nursing in America. You can check that out. Um, we do have a direct hire program for nurse aides. So you may be interested in, in qualifying for that. Um, and we also have additional allied needs. So down there at the bottom of the screen, you'll see our uh, partners in the U.S. who are hiring nurses may also be hiring medical lab technicians, uh, mm -hmm. respiratory therapists, echo techs, surgical techs, sterile processing, and a lot of other um, specialties. So again, you can go to kineticsusa.com forward slash and apply and see if there's something out there for you. Um, thank you again, Daryl, for joining us today and sharing some of your experience. I wish you all the best. I want to hear when you go check out that racetrack. So please let us know, maybe come yeah. back and share some of your other experiences once you have more time to explore. Um, and we look forward to hearing how things are going maybe over the next few weeks and months for you. But it sounds like you've uh, off to a good start with a great company, a lot of support, already making friends and driving. So <laughs> that's really awesome. Congratulations. And thanks for sharing your time and experience this morning. Thank you for having me. Take care. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Onwards and upwards.